Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Metaverse Workshop with Optimism, um, how to fund public goods with NFTs. Really excited to have you with us today. Um, I would love to see some of your faces if any of you are willing to take your cameras off. Um, it's lovely, lovely speaking to smiling faces over black screens. Um, we've got Binji with us today from Optimism and he'll be um, taking the workshop. Welcome Binji um, and welcome everybody else. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Alex. I'm the program manager for the Metaverse Hackathon. Um, if you'd like to set up a call with me, I'm going to pop my Calendly into the chat box and you're absolutely welcome to do so. I hope a lot of you have um, set up your teams and are ready to start building already. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And if you haven't joined our Discord, um, I'd really recommend you do so. All the important announcements and updates will be on our Discord channel. Um, so I'll drop that link in the chat box too. In the meantime, can you just pop into the chat box where you are um, calling in from in the world? I'm currently in London, so I'll put mine here. Um, but I'd love to see where the rest of you all are. We've got one from France. San Francisco, amazing. The time differences must be massive from everybody being so global. Um, Italy, Dubai, Canada, USA, this is awesome. India, awesome. Okay, I'm ready to start this workshop um, and I hope you are ready too. It's gonna to be an awesome one. Benji, I'm gonna hand over to you and let you introduce yourself to the cohort. Hello, hey everybody. Uh, I'm Benji. I am a developer advocate here at Optimism. Um, I've been working here for about nine months. I used to be a product manager at Coinbase prior to this. Um, I joined the space largely due to force um, earlier on in my life because um, I moved when I was relatively young and my parents from my home country couldn't really transfer money um, and crypto was literally the only way out. Um, and that brought me to this idea that this technology and what we have truly is a way to kind of like really solve these issues that have been existing across the world. Um, and it comes with like money transfer issues. It comes with like, you know, user IP issues. It comes with like ownership issues. Um, creators like being able to sell their own work specifically with NFTs. Um, and it also comes to this issue of public goods. So that's what brought me into optimism where um, I don't, for those of you guys who don't know, we actually give 100% of the sequencer revenue that we generate um, back into public goods funding. So we retroactively fund people that create public goods. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what those public goods are, how that's structured and everything. Um, but that's a quick intro on me. So Benji, um, I'm based in New York City. If anyone of you guys are here, would love to meet in person. Um, I also, within my work, I actually deal with new projects building on L2s. So everything from DeFi to NFTs to projects. So if any of you guys want to deploy something on Optimism, definitely do let me know. And we'll work to, you know, give you support in terms of like auditing, testing, uh, potentially grants in the future, and also like maybe co-marketing as well, if there's a world there. Um, but yeah, it's a bit more about me. I'm really excited for this, by the way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benji. It's so lovely to meet you and thank you for introducing yourself. Um, and everybody here, welcome again to the Metaverse Workshop with Benji. Um, Benji, I'm going to hand over back to you and you can take the workshop. Um, to everyone else who needs to ask questions, would you prefer that they ask, like wait until the end um, or just pop questions in the chat as you go? Um, you can literally determine the flow as you wish. Yeah, um, I think as we go. So I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of context on this presentation as well. So I wanted to talk about public goods and, you know, what we're trying to do there and what, how NFTs fit into that. But um, in order to start with, I would love to kind of go a little bit more into like general optimism. Like what is optimism? Like, what are we doing here? There's so many chains in the world. Like what makes optimism different? Um, what makes optimism different as an L2? What is an L2? All this thing. So I'm just going to do a quick intro there. Um, I would love if anyone has any questions, like actually, honestly, like feel free to unmute even um, or leave a question on the chat. Definitely like open to all of that. Um, I would love for this to kind of become a discussion. Um, 
sort of space in general, like as I present as well. Uh, and I say that largely because I think when I look at optimism and the way we build with builders, it's essentially we don't want anyone who's deploying on optimism to feel like they're building on optimism. Instead, we want you to feel like you're building optimism. Um, you know, we're, we're on the path to like full decentralization. So anyone who's on here that wants to like contribute to the network has as much ownership as the next person. So um, yeah, I kind of want to translate that into this presentation as well. So, you know, we, we can definitely go back and forth. So feel free to unlock, um, unmute yourself or drop something on the chat. I'll just have it pulled up on the side here. I just might not see it because I have, I'll have the slides that I'm sharing, but yeah. Um, Alex, if there's a bunch of questions, you just want to like- I'll point it out. For okay. sure. <laughs> Cool. So let me share. Benji to rejoin. Um, would you guys like to just like tell, let me know if you um, have found a team? Just put in the chat box yes or no. I just want to get a bit of a feeling um, how many of you are already in a team and are ready to start building. Um, and while you, you know, putting that in the chat box, I'll let Benji continue. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So optimism. Um, what are we, what do we do before I dive into our tech and before I dive into public goods and NFTs in particular, I want to just dive into like crypto as a general thing. Like what is crypto? Like, and there's so many definitions. Is it a digital ledger? Is it like, you know, replace the financial system? Like what are we doing here as a larger industry? Um, and in my eyes, you know, I think, I think a lot of crypto is about incentive structures. Um, I think we live in a perpetual loop of incentives that are individualistic that are passed down to us by, you know, like society and like just like societal norms and that like were programmed way before we ever had a say and we just kind of have to, you know, go by these incentives that are preordained. Um, the point I want to make is that there is a mysticism found in blockchains that we do not find anywhere else. And that mysticism is basically a superpower that blockchains and crypto and what we, you know, as a large community here, like what we are able to do. Um, and the superpower lies actually in the ability to reprogram incentive models and to innovate faster than ever before, because we are literally able to take these incentive structures in the world of money, in the world of art, in the world of governance, and program it differently and create a new world, um, which is, I think, like one of the most powerful things that has ever been invented, not just like in tech, but like in social structures of mankind. Um, so that's just like one thing on incentive structures and, um, I'll follow up with this on like how this relates to public goods as well, because that, that is very, very closely entwined. So, you know, enter Ethereum. Ethereum lets you program money. Money lets you program incentives and incentives lets you program social structures. Um, because of Ethereum, because of smart contracts, we can now like anyone can now create new incentive structures. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you wanted to create, you don't have to be a king to create a new governance system. You don't have to be a finance minister to come up with a new uh, monetary policy. You don't have to be a Hollywood artist to become like, have your art shown around the world. And I think it's literally because we're able to create these new incentive structures and anyone is able to do so. Um, so, you know, I, that is one of like the superpowers within crypto. Now, you know, the, this also goes into this idea um, of the unbundling of everything that crypto kind of puts forward. And my favorite example to use for this is just like the world of media. So, you know, People Magazine is this like popular gossip magazine, like in 2001, I don't know, like around that time, this was like everyone's source of news. You know, it was like, this is reality TV for me. It would be like People Magazine. I'm going to read this. These guys were the biggest thing. And then somewhere along the lines, like after some time due to technology, the Kardashians became a thing, right? Like they unbundled, they unbundled from this one People magazine business into a family of influencers. So, you know, it got like a bit wider. And then there were other influencers that also came about. And then TikTok came. And now like People magazine that was unbundled by Kim Kardashian and her family was now being unbundled by thousands and millions of creators around the world that are taking attention of people today. And this is this idea of, of the unbundling of everything. Um, you can also think of that this within a crypto context, right? Like you had this incumbent system, like a financial system, um, like the big, big old banks of the world. 
then around 2010, you had fintech start slowly become a thing and people started using different banks and like digital banks and stuff that all that became a thing. And now you also see like crypto becoming a thing where you are your own bank. Um, so this unbundling kind of is something that's happening in greater society. But because of the way crypto is structured, like we can do this in more things that are usually not able for like private individuals to do. So for example, like, you know, media is like anyone can go and like do media stuff, but not anyone can go and create a new monetary policy. Not everyone can go and create a new governance system. Um, crypto allows you to do that. And that that's, you know, speed runs the unbundling process um, that I believe that mankind is on in general. So, you know, now, now what is optimism? Um, the best way to think about it is Ethereum is the best city in the world. Um, I have my biases, right? So let's say like Ethereum is the best city in the world. It is beautiful. There's so many things. There's so much positivity. There's so much history. There's, it's just like a lot of massive mission that everyone's trying to accomplish. The city's getting nicer and nicer every day. Like new upgrades are happening, all that stuff. But um, let's say Ethereum is the best city in the world. But it can get crowded, right? Like we have seen it. I think if anyone's used the network during the bull market, um, oh my God, the fees were so high, right? Like it was like hard to get a transaction and it was just difficult to mint stuff. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not Ethereum's fault really. It's just, it's too popular um, and it gets a bit crowded. So, you know, what do in the real world, when a city gets crowded, when a city gets too big, what happens, right? I think like one of the things that we see is cities when they get too large, they develop larger highways, they develop subway systems, they develop public transport, um, and they develop skyscrapers. And in Ethereum's context, you know, they developed optimism. Um, they developed layer two scaling solutions. So just like the big cities need skyscrapers and subways to operate and accommodate people, Ethereum needs optimism, right? One thing though, so the general take is like Ethereum's a city, gets too crowded. Now, how do we make a city like more functioning, even though it's crowded? We get it, we get layer twos. So we get skyscrapers, subways, et cetera, all these things um, to help Ethereum be more livable. Um, optimism is that solution for Ethereum. Um, but the one thing is like, we're not just actually, we're actually just not, sorry, we're actually not just scaling the tech, right? Like we are actually also scaling the values. Like, what is the reason why Ethereum exists today? Like, what was the larger mission? Um, I think just to add on a separate point as well on the value side is what we, we have this massive industry, like trillions of dollars, people from all over the world. We have everyone here, um, you know, focusing on this building, but building this ecosystem, like growing things, like developing, trying new things and all of that. Um, there's so much money in the world. There's like partnerships happening from big entities, like interest from governments, like it's become so so big um but sometimes like i think it's very helpful to look back on how this thing started and when you actually like go to how everything started right like satoshi's first ever post on that bitcoin talk forum uh, or like not bitcoin talk forum i don't even, it was like some random forum i don't even know exactly which forum it was but when you go and like really boil it down to that you realize that the, every single thing all trillions of dollars of value had been started because someone posted something on a forum and it had no money attached to it. It had nothing attached to it apart from an idea, but people believed in it. There was a value in it, right? And that like, no one talked about Bitcoin. No one talked about Ethereum in the early days as well. And it was just like, the only reason we are where we are here is not because the price went up or because like, you know, this like catalyst happened or a partnership happened. It, the only reason we are where we are is because there were people that believed in the values and that is what has gotten crypto here. And it's, what's going to take crypto, you know, where we're going. So um, optimism is not just scaling the tech, but we are also scaling the values. And um, so what do I mean by that? Right. I should have put on this slide. Um, so not just tech values as well. So what do we mean by that? Um, let's to get down on the specifics, right? So Ethereum right now, generates $5 million a day. Like literally like it is the most profitable, one of the most profitable companies in the world um, in terms of like cost and PNL and everything like PE ratio. I don't know if you guys are interested in like stock market stuff, but like, yeah, um, Ethereum is $5 million a day, right? And this is a bear market. This is literally like 
literally a bear market. Um, now, all those, all that money that's generated in fees from Ethereum goes back to miners and validators now, right? It doesn't necessarily go back to the community, right? It doesn't necessarily go back to the people who actually like created the tech for Ethereum or created that public good infrastructure for Ethereum. Um, and you know, the, these fees exist because it, it helps secure the network. So it's like, you have to pay the validators for securing the network, the miners previously. Um, but you know, there's all this money that's being generated and it's not necessarily going to the community. Now imagine like what would happen if this $5 million a day went back to the community, like literally went back to core contributors of Ethereum, went back to people who like really like help make the city, right? Like help put the cement on the city, help put like plant the trees of the city. Like that's not where this goes. This goes to the people who are securing the city, which is of course still very important. But like, you know, one might wonder like, what if, what if we didn't just, it's like, if you had a country, like, would you only fund your army? You know, you'd, you'd probably also want to fund like your gardeners, your like government workers, like your highway builders, like all of that as well, right? Like if you were to design a city. Um, but Ethereum, like based on this current model, actually the fees go to the validators. Um, but for the longest time, like if you read any of Ethereum's like long-term ideas and stuff, it's very much aligned with being able to create a society in which like everyone is able to get paid for their impact. Um, and that is where optimism comes in. So optimism, um, just structurally, right? Like we are around 10 X cheaper than Ethereum. Uh, we're going to be a thousand X cheaper than Ethereum in about like once uh, EIP 4844 comes out as well. Um, all of this while not being an alternative layer one, like we are Ethereum, everything settles down on Ethereum. Um, so we're scaling it, right? We are, have committed, um, and this is going to be true for the rest of our existence, for the rest of eternity. We are going to give away all profits from sequencing to public goods funding experiments. So if you look here, we're making, I think on an average, you know, $40,000, $50,000 a day. Um, and the fees are, you know, like Ethereum 5 million, us 40,000, largely that discrepancies because we're just cheaper. So, you know, if it was the same magnitude, it probably maybe be like 400,000 a day. Um, but we're there too, fees are cheaper. So even the fees that we earn are a little lower. Um, but, you know, we make $40,000 a day and this is a bear market and this is a layer two that's just kind of, you know, we're really young. Um, all of that money, actually goes into this pot that then is used to retroactively fund public goods. So people who are creating any sort of public goods can get retroactively funded for this. Um, basically, one, one example that I like to use there is we don't want to live in a world where there's financial martyrs. We, we don't want to live in a world where someone who wants to do a good thing that helps humanity, you know, has to feel like they can't make money. Like, I think we do live in this world today where it's like, I want to work on education. I want to work on solving climate change. I want to work on nonprofits and helping the world, like in charities. All, all of those people, I want to work as an artist. Uh, like all of these things are, pe these people have to feel like I am giving up money, right? To do any of those things, like in the world today, it's like, I'm giving up money. You, everyone here probably has friends who might like study, have not have studied like more, um, you know, liberal arts majors, like art or something. And people in within that realm, like joke around a lot. So I, I did personally also spend time within that realm. And um, people are like, oh yeah, I'm never going to make any money. Like, it's just something that people say, right? Like I'm going to be working at a charity. I'm never going to be making money. And it's, it's just wrong. It just does not feel right. Uh, we should not live in a world where when people sacrifice their time and take their time to help others and help the greater good, they should not feel like they're sacrificing money. In fact, they should get paid like NBA athletes. So we want to live in the world where there are no more financial martyrs. You know, if you want to do something good, you get paid. You get paid for the impact. Um, we want to remove the opportunity cost of doing things that benefit the greater good. We don't want you to feel like, oh, I should have maybe become a banker. <laughs> like, you know, you, you do something, you believe in it, like you should be able to do that without having to worry that like, you, know, you won't get paid. Um, so... You know, back to this, we have all this money that's collected uh, for public goods. And now how do we distribute it? Like who chooses where things go? Like, how does this work? Um, so this is where Optimism's governance system comes about. We have a governance system where we airdropped OP to about 250,000 people. 
Um, so we have a massive, massive governance system. It's kind of like a DAO. Um, and essentially every quarter we, that governance system would get together and vote on where public goods are taken, right? Like where, which public goods are funded. Um, there's always a list of public goods. There's always a list of people creating infrastructure, educational content, NFTs. Like there's a various ways to define what public goods are. Um, you know, a public good in many ways is just one, a good that like starts that doesn't require VC funding essentially and just like goes and builds on their own and makes it open source and allows other people to compose on top of it. Um, so, you know, that could be art, that could be education, that could be pretty much anything. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we essentially have this, our retro, retroactive public goods funding rewards. Um, and we distribute that to people who are building public goods on Ethereum and Optimism. Yeah, and th this is a site like meme of like what exactly that means. The small brain thing is like profit motive, solve everything, like make things profitable and everything works. Second is like donation funding. Like, you know, that's pretty cool. Like, yes, you can give donations to what you believe in. There's like quadratic funding. Okay, cool. So this, you're getting a little more math involved. And the last one is like retroactive public goods funding. And this is like, you know, the word retroactive here is the most important where you don't just give money like straight up to somebody, you give money after they have an impact um, and you give them like a lot of money when they have that impact. Um, so we're, we're, we wanna live in this world where impact equals profit. Um, and yeah, this is an example I like to use a lot. So, you know, the pessimistic world of today um, is let's say you are really, really passionate about solving climate change. And you want to literally like, you're like, I wanna plant trees. Like, I just want to plant trees. Deforestation is a huge issue in the world. I want to go and plant trees. But let's just say that that is the contribution that I would want to make in my ideal world for humanity. Now, I need $5,000 to plant trees, but I don't have $5,000. So I, I'm like, okay, maybe I should go look for an investor or VC, an angel investor or whatever. So I go, I go and meet this um, VC investor or angel investor. I like, knock, knock. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I want to plant some trees. I need $5,000. Would you give it to me? The VC looks at me at my face and is like, do I look like a charity? Like, why would I give you $5,000? Like, what's my return on investment there? That makes no sense to me is what the VC tells me. And now I'm like sad. I'm like, damn, I'm going to leave. I'm going to become a banker or something. Nothing wrong with bankers, by the way. It's part of the example. Um, you know, I'm not going to plant trees. Damn, um, sucks. So I leave and I never do that ever again. And, you know, I live the rest of my life being like, I wish I had the chance to plant trees. But anyway, the, that's the current world, right? Like you, VCs will not fund you for creating a public good because there's no incentive, there's no ROI. Now, the optimistic world of tomorrow, well, and today, because we've already launched this thing and we're growing it, so, you know, you have the optimistic world. Um, again, now I want to create trees, uh, plant trees. I go to a VC, I knock, knock, like, hey, how are you doing? I want to plant trees. I need $5,000. But here's the thing. If I do a good job, this optimism pool of money that they've generated from their sequencer fees will retroactively fund me for having done a good job. Now a VC is looking at this being like, okay, I can give this kid $5,000 if they do a really good job. And if optimism's uh, like governance system recognizes that, they will literally pay this kid $10,000. Now I get like a little bit of profit here. So it's basically, you know, rechanging that model where VCs now see public good investing as profitable and literally turning the Silicon Valley model on its head where like, yes, VCs right now fund public goods because they want a return on it. But now we're going to give a return on, uh, sorry, VCs fund private goods because they want a return on it. But now we're giving a chance where public goods can have a return on it. So, um, you know, it, it like, as this model grows, as the optimism network grows, as Ethereum grows, as more fees get generated, as that pot gets larger and larger and larger, this gets more and more impactful, um, where people are actually now incentivized to fund public goods. So, you know, now, now I just like really quickly want to talk a little bit, and I want, I'm going to get a bit more into NFTs and public goods and what that entails, um, but I want to talk a little bit about the network itself. So like, for those of you who um, might be like more technical as well, um, just going to skim through this a little bit on like exactly what what's in store for optimism um, and layer twos in general. So the state of rollups today, like what's going on, how are how are they doing? Is you know everything's up and to the right. It's pretty crazy. Like there's like TVL of almost six billion dollars is held on layer twos right now. 
Um, I think it's more, closer to 4 billion at this point, but um, you know, we're very much growing. It's a bear market, but still it's just going all the way up. Um, but you know, rolls are cheap, but they're not cheap enough. You still have other alternative layer ones that are like, you know, that, that say that they're cheaper than Ethereum still. And you know, that, that is something that Ethereum still has to like go against in many ways, I think. Um, two is there's more decentralization needed, right? Like sequencers within L2s are actually like, they are relatively centralized at this current moment. And this is true for all rollups. Um, and then the last one is like, what else can rollups do? Like what else is possible within this rollup world? So one is all rollup fees will go to zero. They will trend towards zero eventually. Uh, proto dank sharding is a way to basically, um, you know, like change the uh, mempool for rollups. So they don't go in the same mempool as everybody else on Ethereum, which should make fees a thousand times cheaper than Ethereum. Uh, the person who invented proto dank sharding actually works at OP Labs. Her name is Proto Lambda. Um, you can follow them on the side here. That's their handle on Twitter. So this is a metaphor I'm going to skip. Um, but bedrock is a first step into pragmatic decentralization. Um, it, optimism is the only like EVM equivalent rollup. So we're not just um, EVM compatible, like, but like we are one to one with Ethereum. So for example, if you have launched anything on Ethereum, the only thing you need to do to put it on Optimism is change the chain ID, which is literally one-to-one. -one. You want to ever Google something on how to build XYZ thing on Optimism, you literally write how to build XYZ thing on Ethereum, and it's the exact same for Optimism. So you know, EVM equivalence is something that we pushed out a lot. Um, and with that, we actually head towards Ethereum equivalence. So we're launching this thing called Bedrock that allows for us, our architecture, to be exactly like Ethereum's in many ways, where we have multiple clients. You can put in a ZK client, you can put in a Bitcoin client, whatever client you want. Um, and you know, we're really, we're really focused on building the best rollup possible. Not just optimistic, not just ZK, not just hybrids, but the best rollup that can be made. So this is where the other part comes in, where like we launched this thing called the OP stack which allows you to deploy a rollup however you wish with full composability. And I think like in Code Club, um, with there's so many like folks that you guys also partner with and have like um, within the space that the OP stack essentially allows for you to kind of mix and match those partners together. So, um, you know, you want to use, you want a ZK rollup that uses different data availability layers, or you want a game that needs max throughput. You want to use move as a programming language on top of Ethereum as a rollup. You can do all of that. Um, and you can do all of that in a shared stack that we're launching called the OP stack. And now these OP stacks, like as you launch these things, they become op chains, right? So you have Optimism mainnet, you have like Bitcoin ZK rollup, you have like other sorts of rollups and all of these things like all connected around the world. Um, and because they all are using the OP stack, they have one thing in common, right? So it makes it way easier to connect them. So now you'd live in a world where if you wanna create your own rollup, the big, so today you live in a world where if you wanna create your own chain rollup, whatever it is, it's really tough, no matter how good your tech is to grow, right? Cause now you need to, you have this awesome rollup thing but you're like, now I need to get like Aave on board. Now I need to get a partnership with OpenSea. Now I need to get all this stuff happening. Um, with the super chain, because these op chains that you create will all be connected to the OP stack and because they can all communicate with each other easily, you will instantly have access to all the dApps that you need. So for example, you make a Bitcoin rollup, but you want to access the OpenSea that already exists on Optimism mainnet, your users will never have to even know, like they can just do it. Um, so that's, that's what the super chain unlocks and really excited to kind of see what people build on top of that. Um, this goes into like how we scale Ethereum by scaling optimism and, you know, ultimately reaching a point where, um, we're just maximizing everything in terms of throughput, in terms of data availability and all that stuff. Um, this is a little bit on our like path to decentralization. So, you know, we we have the first like true set of decentralized fault proofs that we'll be launching through Canon. Um, the fault proofs that exist today on um, rollups are actually they, they're permissioned, so they're not true. They're like it's like two validators that the company owns, so it's not necessarily like a true decentralized fault proof. But we optimism like never decided to do that. We instead we wanted to go on the full decentralized um, fault proof mechanism. Way. So we launch that. We're going to look at decentralized sequencer selection. We want to look at like deploying bonded sequencers. Um, sequencer auctions, MEVA, um, and yeah, just having multi multiple clients, fault proofs, 
allowing anyone to go and build. Um, and, you know, we are open source. We've been forked multiple times and uh, we always will continue to be open source. We will always continue to fund public goods. So no matter what you do on Optimism, you will be funding public goods. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this essentially like the blockchain trilemma. You know, you have, need scalability, security, decentralization. A lot of alternative like solutions within crypto have like largely focused on scalability um, as a thing. So they get cheaper, you know, they get faster, but they, have, they sacrifice sometimes on decentralization and security. Because we inherit the security of Ethereum, we essentially, and, and the decentralization through Ethereum, um, we basically like are able to scale it and hit all three. Um, and how does this translate into NFTs? So, you know, to kind of like bring it all together, I hope this is a um, good introduction on everything that Optimism is doing. But how it translates into NFTs is basically for the first time, um, and this goes way back into the first thing I spoke about, which is incentive mechanisms, right? For the first time, we're creating a world where anyone who buys an NFT, no matter what, no matter what their incentive is, basically is donating to public goods. So you deploy a collection onto Optimism, you get activity onto Optimism, you essentially are donating to public goods. Um, and that, that is pretty game-changing idea in many ways where you take incentive realignment, where there's all this money that, as I mentioned, you know, $5 billion, $4 billion just in a bear market, probably growing closer to 60, 100 billion in the next like five years, who knows, right? Like it's gonna be massive. Um, that all that money, all that fees generated from the activity within that pool of money goes back to funding public goods. So as you guys are like hacking on things, I think just looking at like not just a NFT collection and like what, you, what you're doing on the app level, but like how, what this does longer term for the future of the world. And I think as we get more creators onboarded, as we get more people to understand what the public goods are, the issue with the space currently where like and there's all this money that's generated like crypto is amazing there's people like financial freedom and people make well, like you know can work themselves out in any ways like retire early like do things from across the world um no matter where they went to school or what they are or like language they speak um and all that's really impactful but like you know i think something sometimes there's things that we have to ask ourselves which is like what is the bigger picture like what are we is this just going to benefit the people who are early or is this really, really, really going to benefit the world? Um, and the way in which we benefit the world in my eyes and in Optimism's eyes is by creating a system that changes the incentive structures for public goods funding, which then allows people within crypto, outside of crypto to want to do good, to get paid, to feel incentivized to do good. Because otherwise, um, it's a little bleak in my eyes if we, if we don't do that. Um, cause then no one's incentivized to do things that are good cause they don't get paid to do it. And then no one does it. Um, and we just end up in this endless loop where, um, you know, we're not fully progressing as much as we can, but yeah, I, I would love to take any questions. Um, got like philosophical towards the end, but that is, that is the optimist in me. So we were going to change that. That's awesome, Benji. Um, like honestly, you're getting um such great positive feedback in the comments as well. Um, so thank you for that. We've got one question, um, asking where they could get read up more about public goods funding and optimism. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I, I think if you guys want to scan this, um, you can definitely scan this right now. Um. I will share some links on the chat. So Vitalik wrote about us. Vitalik was really, really key um, in really thinking about public goods. So he, he's been writing about this forever. Our founders used to work at the EF. They're very close. They've worked together um, in many ways. And you know, Vitalik has written an article about our first round of public goods funding. This was our first ever experiment. So you know, we have changed a ton um, from here. And this was like before we even had a governance system. So we did this first round of public goods funding with $1 million. The next round with the current rate that we're going might be around like 10 to $20 million. Um, and imagine like all this capital literally going towards public goods. So um, this is Vitalik's article, right? This one's a bit like, it's like it's a Vitalik article. So it's a bit heavy, I think. Um, we also have this one. Oh, spelled that wrong. 
we have this original first article. It's a bit more digestible, I'd say. Um, I would recommend, this is the first thing I read when I was learning about optimism and that's why I chose to join actually, this Medium article. Um, we also have the best way to kind of learn about us as well is, you know, we have this get started page. And this is what you can send like your parents and like people in your family who don't understand crypto. This is, uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback on this, but people tell me that that get started feature has been the best, easiest way to on-ramp into crypto for their friends ever. Just like, because we try to make it very user-friendly and very easy. Um, and then the other thing I want to say is this announcement here is probably, this is probably the best way to know how to contribute. Like if you want to like help with public goods and join the space and, you know, join our governance system and really like understand what we're trying to do here. The last link I just sent is probably, um, probably the best bet. And I don't know if you, can you see my screen still? Yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah. So this is our governance system uh, collective right now. Um, it's on this forum, right? So if you would like to join or play a part or you know, just understand what's going on within that realm, this is the last link here. But awesome. yeah. Thank you so much, Benji. Um, for everyone else, I'll collect um, all these links and I'll put it on the Discord group as well if it makes it easier. Um, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free yeah, just to take your um, mics off mute um, and you can just pop on and ask Benji anything. Um, also, if you don't want to do that, put it in the chat and I'm happy to read it out. Hi, hi this is Teresa Kennedy with the Black History DAO. We're building out a uh, parachain system for preserving history, decentralizing history. And Benji, I just want to say thank you so much. I feel like you were. Um, I was already kind of thinking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I felt like you was killing me softly with with your words. <laughs> so, how do I set up a, a meeting time with you for a deeper dive in, in our project and, and how we can utilize this to, yeah. to help us move so, forward? Actually, would love for you guys to join this. I was just at ETH SF um, yesterday and just a few things, honestly, like um, it's wild, like the amount of people that are building on Optimism. I, so we had around, I think like 250 projects within that hackathon and a hundred of them were building on Optimism. Um, or 100 plus, I think. So like, there's a lot of folks building on here. There's a lot of things within our mission that people are understanding and writing about. And I made a Telegram group for any builder that I meet over the course of no this month of November um, to basically like hop on here, talk to our community, stay in touch. And you know, we, we really want to support in the way of just like, I think it's not just like we meet you at a hackathon and then you do something and then you like everyone goes on with their lives. Like, we really want to support you throughout the journey. Like if you want to continue building what you start at a hackathon, um, you can talk about this on this channel. You want help like with testers for your product. We have an army of testers who are willing to go and test your product. You want to get help get audited. We can help you get audited. Um, you want to, you know, you want to grow even more, get connected to other people. We can help you connect with everyone from the ecosystem. Like this, let's say like it grows even more and you're like building this whole product out. We can connect you to venture capital to like get to get funding like that that's just like one way of support it's just not it's not just like a we do this thing and it's done it's like we really really wish like everyone here wants to make an nft project or what make nft tooling or work in governance or like just help out here uh we want to make sure that we can give you you know all the all the support possible because support's not just like giving money as well it's like you know providing that connections and um, I like to think of developers as artists and protocols as record labels. And when you look at that relationship, like the best thing a record label can do for an artist is not give them money, but give them like connections and distributions and just like help in that way. And that, that's kind of what we're trying to hope to be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benji. Anyone else? Does anyone else have questions before we wrap up? We've got a question. I don't know if it's a question, but um, we are actively researching proto prototyping a metaverse and would love to test the super chain feature of optimism together with the NFT and Gov. Do you have an SDK, SDK for game developers, specifically for Unity devs? Um, if you want to post that on the Telegram group that I sent, I'll follow up and I, there will be other people on the team as well. I, in terms of the OP chain and like super chain in general, 
right now we're pushing out bedrock and that's going to be out in the next like month or two um and from there we'll be able to create more sdks and help but i think like if you want to be i think it'd be really helpful to be relatively early on that um so we'd love to kind of touch base and see exactly what you guys need and see if there's anyone in our network who could help out there awesome thank you does anyone else have questions before we wrap up Benji, would you mind if I took a screenshot of all of us? I'm going to ask everyone to turn yeah. their cameras on so I can just take a nice um, photo. The screenshot is the best alternative for a photo. Um, so if you guys can put your cameras on, that would be awesome. It'll be at least, you know, not even 10 seconds. Um, and the way I love to do this is just to like put a little reaction, your favorite reaction. So whether it's like one of those ta-da things or a, a heart, um, or anything like that, or a pizza slice. All right, three, two, one, smile. Awesome, thank you very much. Benji, oh, thank uh, you so much for your time. Yeah, you can continue. <laughs> to add one thing really quickly. Uh, so we have a lot of really exciting things with NFTs coming out in general. Uh, I'm gonna provide a small alpha leak here, but not a specific one. Um, Basically, I think in the next couple of months, you'll see Optimism NFTs really taking off in many ways. And like, I think at this moment, we're really excited to get more creators on board. We're working with like people who are like very well known in the space to organize some really fun activations for people who want to build like, you know, imagine a shark tank for NFTs or something. Um, so really, really stoked for that. And I think like if you were able to deploy a collection or if you want to like do anything of the sort on Optimism during this hackathon or throughout life, like we definitely want to support you um, as much as possible and make sure you guys get visibility. I think the one way um, that I do want to mention in terms of like optimism NFTs, if you guys are hacking on anything and you have a question and you don't find it when you write optimism, how to do X, Y, Z on optimism, just do how to do X, Y, Z on Ethereum. We're literally the same. Like we, our code base is exactly the same. So it makes it easy to find that. Um, the second thing is if you don't have a lot of coding experience and you know you still want to deploy an nft collection uh, we do partner with nifty kit uh, which is it's n-i-f-t-y k-i-t they can allow you to have a no code way to make nfts um, we also partner with third web which also does the same thing so th those guys help essentially um, anyone deploy an nft collection really easily and you can also do it on testnet so you don't have to do it on mainnet where you know um, you don't have to pay essentially for it, but if you do want to do it on mainnet, um, definitely reach out to us and maybe we could look into subsidizing stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benji. That's very helpful. Um, and to all of you who are, um, building for the hackathon, um, bonus points for, um, incorporating a public goods funding mission, um, is there. So definitely this was an awesome, um, workshop for it and so thank you for coming and um, thank you Benji for being here um, it was great to have you and um, I hope you all really enjoyed it if any of you have any questions you know where to find me on discord um, I'll be putting all the links that Benji has put on the chat there um, so you can head there to find out more about optimism um, Benji thank you so much for coming we really enjoyed having you yeah, um, just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who's like organizes everything that Encode Club does. Um, guys, I, I think it's so awesome that you're all here and Alex and Steve, like the work that you guys do, this is a public, this is an example of public goods, right? Like this is literally a public good. You guys create educational content for people all around the world. And we want to help out in that way. This is our mission to empower more folks like yourselves to continue doing what you're doing because the long-term impact of these conferences, of these hackathons, is it's even hard to measure because the people that meet each other through these places, the build, things that get built, the ideas that get built, um, you know, are it's like the catalyst. And um, I'm really, really like grateful for you guys inviting me over and for getting a chance to speak here. So, thank you guys. No, thank you, and thank you for your awesome energy. I think you've inspired us all today to be better people. <laughs> awesome thank you everyone and thank you for coming i will see you in the next workshop have a good day bye